another update. It's a little noisy. My brother's painting. I have a fan on. So I just want to do a little update. I have found my original wingtip blocks. one and there's the other that I had out of the tip and uh, one of them goes here like that on the old board which is warped now and this one goes here okay on the old board which is warped so I glued them back together again last night a little dry, but uh, I think it'll work. It's going to make a whole new elaborate thing with aluminum, and so I don't know. I think I'd rather do this. I'm just going <clears> to. <throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some carbon and some epoxy in these gaps here, just to give it a little bit more rigidity. And I may take my trusty saw, Zona flat saw lice underneath these things to get to recover the wood. Yada, dada, dada. Piece them together. Measure them. And that's where I'm going to start at the tips. Strengthening them too. I need to strengthen them. Let me uh, turn the fan off for a second. Alright, that's a little bit better. For noise so and then the plan is to put them up under here this one is pretty much leveled now the way it sits and if I remember right it went it help if you see it it went right here at the very very edge of the tip oh looky there it still works perfect okay that's good okay so yes, it was right at that, that edge where the blo uh, tip block meets the tip of the wing. That's where the edge of the brace was. And that's good. So what I need to do is I need to build another rib, which is going to be, uh, I think, I don't remember if it was right here or not. I don't know. I have to. I have to look at what I look at the pictures, and then uh, I don't remember. So I'm gonna put a rib there to, 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 to steady it. It's gonna lay flat on the center section. Then it's gonna come out here. That'll be the jig, okay? Because I know that these things that I built are proper. They are where they're supposed to be. As far as quarter, it's a quarter inch of washout. I checked the plans. A quarter inch of washout of the tips on each side. So I just want to make sure that it falls close to that. I could literally build all of this into the ailerons to correct it if I want. Also, I can. I may have to a little bit. I'm not quite sure yet. And the other thing I have to do is I have to make hatches here. I may just cut into this, turn it around cut into this because one of the linkages for the uh, drag rudders came loose on the inside. I know it's a little bit weak connection and I might be able to improve the design a little bit but the hatch is going to be on the bottom. So the plan for the airplane as far as fixing the wing tips is this. I have to get everything basically lined up in a jig. Okay. I have to test and see what the washout is in actuality on the tips. I suspect that it won't be correct once I put this in. When, when I set these up properly, I suspect that it will not be where it's supposed to be. And I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to wet the wing by relieving, uh, taking this hatch out on the other side here might be good to help it twist slightly. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish the entire top of the airplane. That's what I'm going to do. 
I'm gonna correct the inlet ducts. I'm going to fix the hatches so everything matches up. I'm gonna, I peeled off some of the old Bondo. It's kind of like Bondo. It's actually what's called a glazing putty. And I'm gonna sand everything down, fix everything up. Fix the delamination here on the top of the nacelles, a little bit right here. And I'm gonna strap it down. I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna make a couple of uh, stand-up ribs here and I'm gonna actually put Velcro. And that's how I'm gonna mount it down. And I'm gonna Velcro over it to hold it down and maybe put some weight on the top. That way I can keep things steady. And once I do that, I think I'll, I won't have a big deal. As long as I can get it close, the trim will take care of a lot of it. And I'm gonna be running a flight controller, so I'm not really too worried about it. I just want to make sure that things are reasonably straight. Some of it you can correct. That's why they put trim tabs on, air, on full scale aircraft. But I can't have it completely whacked out. And after I get the top pretty much ready, finished, should I say, I'm gonna I'm gonna lay out some. Uh, I think it's quarter ounce glass cloth, and um, I have a really good technique where using you use polyurethane instead of uh, epoxy, just minwax, regular polyurethane. I have a I have a catalyst I can throw in it also which will cure it. I may not even use Minwax. I may just use a clear polyurethane I have laying in the back. I'm not sure. It doesn't really matter. You just want to seal the wood and you want to make it so it sticks and everything stays together. Then it will stay in the in the jig for a week or so without moving. And that should cure it. But then I'll work on it consecutively and every night and afterwards I will put it back in the jig and I will sock it down. And that way it stays straight until I can get the bottom ready to cover and then I'm gonna sock it down again when I glass the wings. I'll probably just end up glassing from here all the way out at first leaving the center section of separate because working with quarter ounce glass cloth is really super duper hard. Not really hard just a pain in the butt because it, it's like paper it flows all over the place so that's the plan and I think the next time you see this it'll be in the jig. Thanks for watching. All right, <clears throat> now we need to cut a hatch. In order to do that, we gotta cut through the sheeting. We gotta find the ribs. We gotta find the leading edge. And whatever border I had here, I think I had a piece of wood that goes across. I have to have some sort of support there, I'm pretty positive. So now we get to dig into this thing. I haven't cut into this thing for a long time, but like I said, one of the linkages came loose and I have to make hatches, unfortunately. That's just the way it is. Before I can proceed with the top of the wing, I have to do the jig thing. But in the meantime, I can do a little bit here on the bottom and just at least get at what's oops I got my camera rigged and it is a rig all right now I've cut in that's what's inside. It is a strange thing I'm looking at. Some, some kind of white something. Uh, it could be the aluminum corroding, probably is. The bell crank is definitely tweaked. It needs to be replaced with something made out of carbon fiber or something. I don't know, but that definitely has got to be replaced. I'm glad I opened this thing up. The wood is, oh my god, the wood that I used, where is it? Very tough. 
I used great wood on this plane. It's a shame to cut into it, but in order to get this thing to work correctly, that's what I have to do. So now we remove some more balsa wood to get a better look. All right, now the hatch is a little bit further along. I've uh, squared the edges. Unfortunately, I didn't have a straight edge on this. Dirty fingernail. So I do that line and it's a little bit off. I gotta re, I'm just gonna sand it a little bit. That needs to come off of there. And so now basically everything is close to where we need to be. Now I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna have to make a rib to go in here to support this piece of wood because I've already cracked it. You can see right there. There's it right there. Well, it's messed up. And another support right up in here. And here's a little technique that I use. I usually use paint sticks for sanding blocks. Because I have a whole bunch of this double stick, old double stick, or not double stick, but uh, self adhesive sandpaper. Worn out, 180 is usually the best for initial. You put a piece of tape right here. Always leave the edges without paper. And then you can sand things down kind of flat, like this. I gotta work on this a little bit more because it's not as straight as I need to be. And then what you do is you do what's called a, a it's like a transfer method. If I had my piece of paper, I would show. Let's see it. So I gotta find it. All right, making the first hatch is usually kind of hard, but the second one's actually easy because what you do is you make your hole, then you take a piece of paper, and then you trace it with a pencil, and that gives you an outline. And then in order to get it correct on the other side, you flip it over and measure back. I'm using the edges of the spoiler as a guide, both sides. And this is, uh, I think, one quarter of an inch. That's a basswood strip that's underneath there. It's one of my favorite things for build model planes. I don't know why, it just works in everything. And then you hold it down and you trace it with a pencil and you cut it with a pair of scissors. Then you flip it on its opposite side. You might not be able to see this because I don't have any light over here. Let's see, right there, there we go, a little bit more light. And then you do the same thing on this side. Draw a line down here, there's remnants of one there, right there. Then flip the piece of paper over, trace it, and then that's where you cut. And then it will be identical to this one. And then you gotta build your substructures in order to support. I'm probably gonna use magnets because there's no reason to use button head screws anymore. Because these magnets are like, the neodymiums are unbelievably, incredibly hard to pull apart, so that's it, that's the plan. So time to do a trace. Okay, now we're in the other side, and there's where the linkage broke loose, right there. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just put a servo right here, and I'm going to connect it to the arm that comes off of the ball link that's inside the spoiler, the actuator. So I'll just lay a small servo in here with the arm facing like this, and it'll be a direct connection and I'll just run a wire instead of this big long carbon rod I got in there. I don't know what I was thinking, that's for sure. <laughs> what was I thinking? I think I didn't want to make a hatch. I really got lazy. That's what it was. And now I paid for it. So, there you go. There's the actuation. Let's see, like that. There you go. Yeah, a lot of slop in that arm there, boy. Ooh. If I would have made it out of the arm out of carbon fiber or something like that, it would have worked. It definitely would have worked. 
but there's still torsional flex and all that stuff, you know, so. So, they work good, I just want them to work correctly and not deploy accidentally, and I'm going to put a spring on there so that if the linkage ever does come loose or somehow, it'll spring it closed, because if this thing pops open and stays open in flight on one side, forget it, you're done. It's a spin. So, that's the plan. So just have to get in there. I'm gonna make another hatch uh, for this side. It's best to actually use a new piece of wood and not use, uh, where'd it go? I don't remember it went. Not use the original wood because everything's all messed up. So what you do is you sand into your lines, get everything nice and square, maybe even trace it again and then put it over a new piece of wood and make a hatch and then you fit it. You sand the edges so that they fit. Take it off, look at it. Start with one straight edge here and butt a new piece of wood up against that edge. That's what I normally do to save, you know, it's a little bit of work. See how it fits. And then you just shave down the piece of wood little by little until you get a nice fit here. Nice fit. And then it's pretty much flush. You can put a little bit of finishing putty in there and it'll take up the gap a little bit. And you just gotta open, make sure you, you know, it's gotta have a little bit of a, a crack, of course. And I'm gonna use uh, neodymium magnets and that should be plenty to hold it on no matter what. I doubt very seriously they will blow off. And that's it, that'll be good. So that's the plan. It's coming along little by little. The jig is going to be an undertaking. That's next.